In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create mathematical art, like these images, using Lindenmayer systems. In 1968, Arisid Lindenmayer, a Hungarian biologist, published a paper describing a system of symbols and rules which he used to model the growth of algae. Since then, he and others have developed this idea, first applying it to produce drawings of plants, as well as a variety of mathematical objects. But before we take a look at these, we need to explain how Lindenmayer systems work. The building block of an L system is a symbol. These could be letters, numbers, punctuation, even hieroglyphics, but we'll stick to just letters and punctuation, for simplicity's sake. So if we want to draw things, we'll have to give the symbols some meaning. This can be whatever you like. Maybe F means to draw a horizontal line, and Z means to draw a nice spiral. But again, to keep things simple, we'll use just a couple of symbols with some basic meanings. So, both F and G mean to draw forwards, and plus and minus mean to turn right and left respectively by some angle, and we'll choose 60 degrees for now. Drawing turning on the spot is a little hard, so with these three diagrams you can see plus and minus in action. You'll notice that a string of symbols means to draw them one after the other without lifting the pen from the paper. You can construct all sorts of beautiful and interesting drawings just using these symbols, but that would mean using a lot of them. For example, this requires over 6,500 symbols to draw, and that would take a very long time to write out. So instead, we use rules to generate complicated strings of symbols, iterations, from simpler ones. A rule says that we place one symbol, say F or G or Y or Z, with some others, maybe several, maybe just one, or none at all. The final part of a Lindenmayer system is how to use the rules. To begin with, we need a string of symbols, otherwise there's nothing to apply the rules to. So we'll have to choose a string. We call this the axiom, the zeroth iteration. So if we want to generate the first iteration from the axiom, we look at each symbol in the axiom and try and apply a rule to it, if there is a rule starting with that symbol. So the first iteration has f plus f minus g from the f, then a z from the y, and finally two g's from the g. Note we haven't given the z any meaning when it comes to drawing, so I didn't do anything to draw it. And then, if we do the same thing to this, the first iteration, we get the second, which is rather more complicated. And you can see the pluses and minuses don't change, because we don't have any rules for them. Now that we've learned about L systems, we can use them to do some drawing. Let's start by working out how to draw the highway dragon curve, which looks like this. The basic idea of the fractal is that one line is replaced by two, which are at right angles to each other. So the best place to start is to write an L system that produces that. So the way we'd express that is by replacing F, which means a line, with F plus F. And if we work out a few iterations with this rule, we get these symbols. Unfortunately, these just mean drawing squares after the second iteration. So we need to try something else. Let's try labeling the turns on the final product. Plus for right, minus for left, as before. And then we can see there are two kinds of line. We'll call them F for ones that are replaced by a left turn between two lines, and G for ones replaced by a right turn between another two lines. So the first line of the first iteration has to be an F, since this is a left turn, and in the same way the second line has to be a G, since this is a right turn. So the first rule replaces F with F minus G, as it's a left turn in the first iteration. And by the same logic, the other rule must replace g with f plus g. And you can see this if you look at the first, second, and third iterations. So we've seen how you can draw one fractal with L systems. There are many others you could also draw. For example, the Sierpinski triangle, the Hilbert curve, or Penrose tiling. You can also apply them to Lindenmayer's original inspiration, plants. People have used L systems to draw leaves, bushes, and trees both as 2D line drawings and as 3D models that could be used in video games or animation for movies and TV. But since I'm working on paper, I'm going to stick to 2D drawings, so let's have a go at drawing a tree. But before we get started, there are two more symbols that we'll find very useful. They're brackets. 
When drawing, a left bracket means to add the current position and direction the pen is pointing in to the end of a list, and a right bracket means to take the last entry off that list and return to the position and direction it says. This makes it really easy to draw branches. I've just written out two ways of drawing this little fork-like shape. With the brackets, it's just 10 symbols, but without them, we need to write instructions to draw each branch in reverse, so the other branches can start in the right place, and that takes 28 symbols in all. We can get started on our tree then. Like many L systems, it makes sense to set the axiom to just be F, so we need a rule for that. Let's replace it with this shape, which we can express as a rule like this. I'm not going to read out any of the symbols from here on, as there are far, far too many. But if we try working that out, we develop a bit of a problem. In the second iteration, you can see that it's drawn twigs, so to speak, where there was just a line, but after that, it's drawing itself a big, messy spiral. Like before, we can use F and G. Let's say F means a line that should turn into smaller branches and twigs, like these ones, and G one that doesn't, so G is more like the trunk of a tree, so these other lines. We can label F's and G's onto the diagram, matching the ones I just pointed out, and then we can see how the rule for F needs to change. These F's should all become G's, so if we rewrite the rule in full, it looks like this, and immediately the drawings look much more like a plant. There are still a couple of tricks to make this look nicer. The first is to make the trunks longer on each iteration. If we add a rule replacing G with GG, then the trunks separate the branches from each other and define a bigger overall structure to the tree, which makes it look more realistic. And the final alteration is entirely optional, but it's a neat trick involving the brackets. Here, I altered the first G, and it looks rather like a shrub. And in this one, the second G is changed, making it look rather more like a tree in summer, and without either of these changes, it looks like a leafless tree. But whichever of these you choose, you can produce some rather nice botanical drawings. So I've shown you just two of an enormous range of Lindenmaier systems, which can draw all sorts of things, but now you know how they work, you can use them to design your very own mathematical art.